Welcome back to another episode. And um, <clears throat> I'm a little behind, but um, before I get into this one, a few things I wanted to make, a few statements, um, something I want to get off my chest. First, uh, my condolences to my dear friend and your family. Um, this past week, uh, we just sent off a friend of mine's mother, who was a second mother for me, and um, it was a tough one. It was a tough one, but I want to thank um, both Kevin and Alana for allowing me to be a part of that celebration of life. And um, I also want to thank all the supporters, all the people that I had that had a hand in, in guiding you guys and, and supporting you and assisting you and mentoring you and allowing this process to take place without a hitch. And it was definitely great to see a lot of familiar faces that I haven't seen in many years. And it was great to also see and, and experience and witness what I already knew, which was the vibrant person um, your mother was and the number of lives that she was able to touch. So I just wanted to say thank you for allowing me to be a, a part of your family and I'm definitely going to miss mom and um, we're still going to be thick, right? And me, you, Kevin, the rest of your family members, we're going to be thick as thieves. Um, nothing's going to change as far as our relationships and that is one thing that I will always cherish. So thank you for that. Now, <clears throat> This week's episode is an interesting one, and it's an interesting one because it's something that we've all been connected to or we've heard through others' experiences. We've also heard vicariously through family members, the media. We've heard a lot of, of, of it, and it just got me thinking, and so hence why I want to share my thoughts with you on this episode. So let me dive right into it. The current state of society scares me. And it scares me a lot, right? Because of this feeling of I can't trust the people in my circle to remain sturdy when there's an earthquake, right? So I've always questioned who can I count on if there was ever an earthquake? And I've noticed over the years my circle has gotten smaller and smaller. And I'm sure it's for a reason because I also understand that people are only in your life for a season. And so I don't expect them to stay for the entirety of my lifetime. And nor should they expect me to stay in their life, to, in their life um, for the lifetime, right? It's just the nature of how, how it is. But when things are falling apart and you need your circle to not flip on you in order to save themselves, which most of the time they will choose to do so, what do you do, Right? And a lot of people will choose to help themselves before they think about helping you. And sometimes they're not sure whether to help you or take advantage of you. And it's not necessarily their fault. It's just the way it is, right? So there's a statement that I remember. Pardon me. There's a statement that I remember. Loose lips sink ships. Right? 
and I'm realizing there are more ships sinking today than there are sailing. And everyone's snitching today. Whether you want to believe it or not, everybody is snitching today, right? Who said they would never snitch, right? Thanks, thanks to the internet, social media, and freedom of speech or expression, everybody is snitching. And what's scary is we snitch, but we don't even know we're snitching, right? We're doing it on a regular basis. We just don't know we're doing it. Now, if you haven't figured it out yet, I've used the same word numerous times, which is snitching. Some of you might know it as ratting. Some of you might know it as informant. But we are all those three words. Every single one of us in one capacity or, or another. Right? And this episode, I called it Why Not Snitch for Life. I think if you did that, then life would be so much easier, less pressure, less expectations. People know exactly what they're getting, right, from one another, as opposed to this pretentious idea of, no, 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 he's he's down, he's real, or she's real, and she's, you know, she's a bad B, and and this and that, she's she's my ride or die, or he's my ride or die, and we're lying to each other, right? Because if we're being honest, right, and if I'm being honest, I'm conflicted between the old guard of getting rid of snitches and the new... Um, of truth-telling for the betterment of all. That's what I call it, right? Everybody's telling their truth. It just so happens my truth may not benefit the next person who's involved in that story or that narrative. So therefore, I might get labeled a snitch for that. But Since we're on the topic, and this is what the episode is about, Let's see if we can debunk some of these, you know, theories and some of these ideas that we've adopted. And I'd like to start with just a brief, you know, definition of what the word or the term means, just for anybody who might not be familiar with it. And if you are familiar with it, indulge me, okay? I'm not trying to obviously, you know, insult you in any way, but I like to lay the foundation so people are on the same page as we continue this dialogue. So, a snitch is an informant or a witness, right? Someone with valuable information for law enforcement agencies, okay? In the community, we are surrounded by such individuals, right? They're often our friends, family, members, co-workers, and at times strangers. You and I have snitched on someone at some point in our life unknowingly. So... What should be done with us for snitching? That's the question. What needs to happen to us for snitching? But I don't expect you to answer that question just yet. Right? Let's discuss some key um, facts that may help you with your answer to that question. Right? By the end of the episode, I'm hoping that you'll be able to tell me whether in the comments, right, in the video comment section, or even in the pod on Podbean. Now, before I go any further, um, if you're listening to this episode, please don't forget to subscribe, follow, share. It doesn't cost you much, right? But it definitely helps build the, the show and, and move it into places that I would like to take it. So again, just hit follow if you're not following. If somebody sent this to you, hit follow. Leave some comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to share it, right? Send the link to a friend so they can also get involved in the conversation. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified any time a new episode drops, okay? By the way, you can also find the show on Podbean. Um, and if you're listening to your podcast on Spotify or Apple or any other platform, go ahead, follow it there, right? Like it, comment, any kind of support is greatly appreciated. So let's get back into it. Um, it's important to handle snitches with care, right? To ensure that their information is reliable, their safety is also protected. This approach is crucial because it speaks to how valuable a snitch can be and is. Now, 
Remember what I said earlier about truth tellers. An eyewitness is somebody who saw something that happened. Okay? So if I see something happen and it's bad, should I not report it? Should I not say anything? Even if I have no ties to the person committing this act? That's another question. Now, the reason why it's a, it's a catch-22, it's a double standard, is because I don't have any ties to the person committing this act, some might say it's okay for me to do it. And because I have no ties to the victim, if there is one in the act, some might say it's okay for me not to report it. However, double standard comes in if I know the victim. Then everybody says, oh, if that was you, wouldn't you want your boy or your friend or your ride or die to say something so that you can get justice? I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm planting the seeds and it's up to you whether you want to water it or not. All right. But. So let me keep pushing forward, because I think these are all thoughts that kind of run through my head as I'm um, processing this information here. Um. When a friend of yours tells you what another friend did and the information that you received was accurate, you appreciate and value the snitch because that's what they are, right? So think about that. If your girlfriend tells you that another one of your girlfriends is sleeping with your man, you would appreciate that friend, especially when it's true, okay? Okay. However, if the information is false, right, we despise the snitch and the information becomes a rumor because it didn't serve our, our needs. So that same scenario, your best friend tells you that another one of your close friends is sleeping with your man and you find out that's not true. How are you going to feel towards that best friend that told you that story? They did snitch, but when it benefits you, you're okay with it. You consider them your BFF. You give them all the accolades that we want to give our best friends. But when it doesn't benefit you, and it's a lie, oh, we want to hang and crucify this person. We want to go back and actually double up and spread another rumor about that individual and how they're such a liar and then find all the historic incidences that may have been true, but the one time they lied, we're going to crucify them. Right? This is the double standard. Now, I want to share with you some steps for handling your informants or your snitches or your BFFs, or your homegirls and homeboys, right? Or even your coworkers, right? So the first thing we need to do is verify the credibility of the informant. Before relying on the information from a snitch, it is important to verify their credibility, this can involve checking their trustworthiness record, if there is such a thing, okay? Uh, speaking with other people about how they've been to them in the past, friends or family who have worked with them in the past, right? And conducting a background check, so to speak, to ensure that they are not providing false information. Now, this is very challenging for the you know average person to kind of get all this information because we have our own biases in place. For example, we'll lean towards the, the fact that I've known this person since, you know, kindergarten or junior school. And so that alone gives them that trustworthiness. But the fact that the matter remains, I still don't actually know who this person has become or who they are currently. Because back then they were a different person than they are today. Right. So we take those things for granted. We use time as our baseline, but Time can be very deceiving and, and um, not accurate with information that it provides because of our own biases as well. So <clears throat> you want to do your due diligence and see if you can get as much information as possible. Right. Um, next, you want to make sure you treat that informant uh, with respect and protect their identity. So before I go off. And, you know, and put them on blast and say, hey, this person's a snitch. This person's doing this and all that stuff. I need to make sure I protect them to a degree until I get all the information that I can possibly get from them and then decide. Okay. Because informants often provide information at a great personal risk 
yeah, they have a lot to lose, right? So it's important to treat them with respect and protect their identity. Um, this can involve using code names, right? Providing them with uh, secure communication channels. How are we going to communicate for you to share the information, right? And ensuring that their information is not shared with others who could potentially, you know, hurt them or their identity. So it's also important to keep detailed records of all the interactions, right? Today we call that receipts. Make sure you keep your receipts with this person, um, including information that they, they provide and any actions taken based on that information. They must, right? <clears throat> and they may actually be providing you information about you to another handler, right? Another person or friend. So you have to kind of remain apprehensive, right? Don't get too attached, especially when you're in the middle of an investigation. Don't divulge too much because you're watching your informant to see how much they're getting from you and who are they going to give it to potentially. That could potentially come back and harm you. So the minute you suspect someone is an informant or you're treating them as such, you need to be careful how much information you, um, you know, divulge. Now, once you've verified that the credibility of the informant and their information is important, <clears throat> right? It's important for you to follow up on any leads that they have provided. So if they, you know, um, implicated somebody else in the story um, and the information that they've given you, you might want to connect with that individual and see, hey, um, you know, indirectly kind of probe and see what information that you can, you can get, right? This is you kind of conducting further investigation and gathering evidence to support your objective, I guess, right? So you have to maintain that. You have to stay on the ball until you get a, you know, a conclusive um, set of information. You have to also remember handling snitches involved, verifying their credibility, treating them with respect, protecting your identity. Those are the th key things that you want to make sure you maintain throughout this whole process. Uh, you also have to make sure you keep a detailed record of your interactions with that individual and then obviously uh, following up on information that they have given you. So that's just your guide, right? And how to deal with informants or snitches or rats that you might have in your circle. Now, don't get me wrong. We all have them in our circles. We just haven't given them the appropriate labels yet. <laughs> okay. And, and. We've heard this this statement before. If you're you know grew up in any a setting um, or you watch certain movies in the urban settings and things like that, you've heard snitches get stitches. You've heard the media also allude to it when there's a lot of crime rates in in certain city uh, pockets of the cities. So snitches get stitches. That phrase right is a slang expression that suggests that. Um, people who provide information to the law enforcement or other authorities will be punished by, you know, being physically harmed and sometimes even killed. Those are the extremes. OK, now the phrase is often used as a threat to discourage people from sharing information. And if a community adopts this idea or, or this concept it automatically silences everybody in that community. It puts a muzzle on them. Why? Because they all understand what it means. And because we all understand what it means, guess what? Nobody's going to tell on anyone, which makes the job of any enforcement officers or agencies to do, you know, it makes their job much difficult, much more difficult. So I guess the question I'm asking is, does this rule apply to relationships, friendships, and family members? Does it apply? Because I've already told you that we all snitch. We all lie. We spark rumors. We tell indirect stories about other people to other people. So, does it apply to those closest to us? People snitch every day to their bosses. Talk about friends to other friends, family members, and the snitching goes on. Should we threaten all these people in our lives because we are also human? 
I'm just posing the questions. These are some of the thoughts that I run through. Ignorance isn't an excuse, but it is a disease. You will pay for your ignorance at some point in your life. It'll cost you. Okay? So we need to acknowledge that first and foremost. It is important to remember that providing information to law enforcement is not a crime. And that, and that people who do so are protected by the law. And if they're not, they should be protected by the law. Right? Threatening someone with physical harm for cooperating with law enforcement is a serious crime and can result in criminal charges being filed against the person making the threat. So these are just the rules and the facts of the situation. You just need to be aware of it. Okay, so if you're the type that's going to bully people or threaten people, just a heads up for you. Right? The threat alone can be taken very seriously and charges will be laid. Okay? Now... In addition, <clears throat> relying on information from sources who have been threatened or coerced into providing it can undermine the credibility and reliability of that information. So if your snitch or your informant has been threatened by someone else to give you false information, that's a very possibility because maybe that individual's threat um is much more, I guess, serious, meaning that individual, the informant, took it more seriously than any threat you might have, you know, presented uh, prior. So this is what you need to be aware. There's always a bigger, a bigger bully out there, right? And so for these reasons, it's important to handle snitches and or your, your informants with care. You want to make sure that information is reliable and that their safety is you know protected because once they feel like you can't protect them anymore they'll go to the next person who they feel can protect them better than you can right they'll go to the next person who they feel can actually keep their secrets better than you can and so you need to be aware of that and i think that's critical some of us might be familiar with another term for informants which is a rat it's the same thing Right? It's just a slang term for someone who provides information as well. Okay? Um, but we use it, you know, either the term snitch or rat, um, as an insult to suggest that the person is disloyal or untrustworthy. So informants or snitches play a valuable role in law enforcement by providing information about criminal activities. Yes, we all know that. But their involvement in, a, in, in uh, any investigation can also put them at risk. And we know that. But how do we handle a friend who constantly lies? Let's bring it closer to home now. How do you handle a friend or family member or coworker that you're close to who constantly lies? Right? And they love the drama. How do you handle somebody like that? Right. It's not easy. OK, because there's a relationship there. But if you suspect that a friend is lying on uh, to you. Right. It can be very difficult. And, and oftentimes it's very uncomfortable to confront them about it. But it's important to address the situation in a way that is, you know, respectful and preserves the integrity of your friendship. Because that's what's at stake at that point. Right. That friendship um, may fall to the left or to the right. Um, but the question then becomes, are you going to be able to rebuild it or reestablish it to the place where you both once were? And that's really what's at risk when that happens. So here are some steps for handling, you know, that friend who tends to lie, that you suspect is lying. Okay? Um, you might want to confront the friend about, you know, their behavior. If you suspect that a friend is lying to you, it's important to confront them about it in a direct and non-accusatory way. Right? This can involve stating your concerns and asking them if they have been truthful with you. Just be straight up with it. But once you've confronted your friend about their behavior, it's important to listen to their explanation and consider their perspective. Were they going through something? 
did they feel like they couldn't trust you and that's why they started lying? Did you do something to, you know, uh, initiate them in this behavior? Um, or did someone else outside of your relationship, you know, plant a seed, a rumor that, you know, caused them to start going down this path of not trusting you and, and lying to you? Okay. Um, they may have a valid reason for why they lied. And understanding their point of view can help to resolve that situation. So this is where critical thinking comes in. You have to gather as much information as possible and apply it to your situation, your scenario, and then see where you can get the best results, right? If you're not satisfied with your friend's explanation or if their behavior is unacceptable to you, it's important to express your concerns, right? And while you're expressing those concerns, also make sure you outline the boundaries that are, you know, violated and be clear about them. Okay. This can involve telling them how, you know, their behavior has affected you and setting limits on what you are willing to accept moving forward. If it's impacting you to a great degree, why let it continue? Set your boundaries. Right. This is the other problem. A lot of us don't have boundaries. We just have assumptions and expectations that are so unrealistic that when someone acts within those, we're like, whoa, this person's acting out of character. No, they're not. They're just being human. You didn't set any boundaries. You, didn't, you just had your own expectations of how you would have conducted yourself in those scenarios. But it doesn't mean that they're, you know, um, adopted the same mindset. So. <clears throat> If your friend's behavior has caused you some pain or betrayal, it's important to take some time, right, to process your feelings and decide on a course of action. Again, if you notice, this comes back to you and what are you going to do about it? What are you willing to do about it? And at what cost? Because there's going to be a price to be paid. Okay. Now, this may involve, you know, seeking support from others, right, such as maybe a therapist or close family members and considering whether, you want to continue the friendship or not. That's the biggest decision that you have to make. Is this a worthy friend? Is this somebody that I still consider a friend? It's important to recognize that handling a lying friend involves confronting them about their behavior, listening and you know to their explanation and perspective. Expressing your concerns is also critical. Setting your boundaries and taking some time to process your feelings and decide on a course of action. People hurt others people lie people steal and people cheat at some point in your life you will assume one of these roles however it's critical to remember when you were once a character before jumping to your verdict on someone else's right so we all partake in one of these characters, one of these roles at some point in our lives, in various relationships. We all snitch, inform, and rat. We just don't want the labels or the associations that are attached, right, to those labels. And this is something that we need to be cognizant of. Now, you don't have to worry about any of those labels so long as you continue to speak, right, of the truth. And you do it on a regular basis. But nonetheless, we all lie, snitch, and inform on somebody to another person. We just don't want the labels. And I understand that. Okay? But if you don't want the labels, then the best way to rid yourself of all those labels is just be consistent in who you are. Tell your truth. Tell the truth. And when it's your story to tell, you may speak on it. If it's not your story to tell, I'd advise you not to speak on it. But if it's going to impact somebody in a negative way, I recommend you speak on it. Be who you were meant to be. Human. Not a snitch. Not an informant. Not a rat. But human. Until next episode, love, peace, and a happy new year.